you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8. Uh, we are in this uh, kind of climactic chapter of the book of Romans there. Uh, as we've gone through from the beginning of this book to here. And last week uh, we were talking about living in the spirit. And how we as saved Folks, as those who have known Jesus Christ, come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, that we are to live in the Spirit of God. That we are to walk, talk, act, uh, and, and live our everyday life in the Spirit of God. And we talked about some of the things that make the Lord, uh, this, that disappoint the Lord, that the Lord is not pleased with, and that we should stay away from those things as a good rule of thumb, right? Uh, simple enough. But... This week, we're talking about something that's uh, very exciting, something that uh, is some good news. Could anybody here stand to get a little bit of good news? Uh, I think that we all could because, let's just face it, the, the, the life that we lead now and the days in which we live, good news is rare, isn't it? Uh, it well, as a matter of fact, they're saying that if something's too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, there's times that we just find ourselves down and, and, and it seems like we're out and uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's difficult these days to find something that's worthy of us to be happy about. But the title of our message this morning is It Gets Better. It Gets Better. Uh, this world is not as good as it gets. Amen. This place in which, man, don't get me wrong, God's creation is beautiful. You ever been out early in the morning and you see the sun coming up? It's beautiful. I've been all over the place uh, uh, in the state of Arkansas and we've got some beautiful scenery. I even went uh, to West Virginia and they call it almost heaven. I said, if it's called almost heaven, Lincoln County is the promised land. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's just nothing like your home, right? Uh, but, but, but there's beautiful things that I believe the Lord doesn't want us to be miserable here on earth. I believe that. Uh, the Lord doesn't want us to be miserable. The Lord, I believe, wants us to uh, have an enjoyable life. He tells us in the Bible how to have an enjoyable life. But there's still heartaches. There's still sorrow, there's still pain, there's still difficult times and hardships that take place. But I want to tell you this morning, it gets better. Let's start there in verse 18. And it's going to kind of be our, our, our uh, uh, main verse here that we're looking at. But we're going to read all the way to verse 30. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectations, or expectation of the creature, waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope is a hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, the he also did predestinate 
to be confirmed, conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Uh, so very thankful, Lord, that we are here in your house. And so very thankful for each individual who made it today and who came to God's house. Lord, we pray for those who uh, weren't able to come, who wanted, Lord, wanted to be here, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that should be here who aren't here, Lord. And we just mm -hmm. ask that you would uh, burden their hearts, that they would uh, come to your house, Lord, and that they would turn uh, uh, in, into servants for you, Lord. And, and Lord, I just pray that this message would be used for your honor and glory. That it would be, uh, it would be uh, done in the way that you would have it done. And that it would be for your honor and glory. You would hide me behind the cross. That I would only say what you want me to. And be with every individual here. And if there be decisions that need to be made, that they be made today. I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It gets better. you ever uh, had uh, a, a loss in your life? Or, or uh, you lose a family member. It's very difficult. But it does get better. There are times, uh, though, that it will still get you. But as a whole, it does get better. But that's not even what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, this morning, I'm not talking about there's still a grief barrier there. Or there's still something that could pull us back or, or, or still uh, create sadness in our hearts. I'm talking about... It gets completely better than it does here on earth. In verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Folks, this world does not even compare with the glory that we will bear one day. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there's coming a day where we will be able to witness not only heaven, but Jesus Christ Himself. I don't know. Uh, there's a song, uh, I can only imagine, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard it, it's one of the most popular uh, Christian songs uh, pro probably of all time, but, uh, you know, we're going to know. We, we won't have to imagine anymore. We'll be able to see Jesus as He is. We'll be able to fall out, you know, the song says, will I, will I stand, will I fall, will I dance? I think I'm going to fall, and then I think the Lord's going to pick me up, and then I might start dancing. I don't know. I may do all of them. Uh, can you believe a Baptist dancing? We can dance. It'd be all right. We can, we can, we can get down with it a little bit. Uh, the, Lord, uh, the Lord has so much in store for us that we don't even comprehend. It says the sufferings of this present time. We have sufferings in our life today. Uh, well, we, I think I talked about it just a few uh, weeks ago. That we have a depressed world. Uh, as a whole, people are depressed. Uh, there's things that go on in our life in which it just gets us down. And I know it's so easy to preach to stand up here and say, you're supposed to give it all to God. That's hard, isn't it? We can be honest. Amen. It's hard. God makes it easy. Why don't we just get it to Him? He says, give me your burdens. I'll give you mine. And they're light. Hmm. That should be so easy, shouldn't it? But yet, we choose to carry them around. It's hard. Uh, uh, just, just an example. Parents, uh, it, it's so difficult to not worry about your child. Is it? We're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to let the Lord take care, but when they're not with you, you worry about them. And, and, and that's something that, you you know, we, but that's just an example, but we have so much that goes on. we got family problems. we got uh, relationship problems. We've got money problems. We've got uh, all sorts of things that are going on in our life. Job problems, uh, you know, worries. And we get down. We lose loved ones. Uh, we lose friends. There's sufferings in this world. But they are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. We're going to be changed. 
We're going to be made different. We're going to be like Jesus. Now we may come back to verse 18, but I give us a little bit of time to get through all these verses. We're going to move on for just a moment. Verses 19 through 23 fit into this same deal. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but the re reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty and to the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which uh, have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to whip the redemption of our body. Now, I've seen preachers preach this passage of Scripture, and they call it groaning. They title their message, Groaning for Glory. We can talk about that, too. But uh, this, this morning... We, we see the difference in someone who is lost and is living a life without the Lord and someone who has been given into the, been delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God is what verse 21 says. Do you know, and we're going to get into it, I'm not going to get ahead of myself or I might, and that's okay. I told Brother James this morning before I... Uh, when we were talking just a minute, I said, this message was so hard to construct because I, I got so many thoughts and they intertwined with one another. So we're going to get where we're going. We just might take a few curves to get there, all right? But that's okay. But we, 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 we have a hope once we've been saved. We have something to look forward to. Uh, we have something to live in today. And I'm not going to get ahead of myself if I could. But we... Uh, in verse 20 it says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected, subjected the same in hope. Listen, there is a day whenever uh, those who don't know Jesus Christ, we're subject, to we're subject to a lot of things. In this world we're subject to things that we don't want to be subject to. Uh, we live in a world that you have to be politically correct. You got to be religiously correct. Uh, and I'm sorry, but there ain't but one way to heaven, Amen. and it's Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Uh, there's there's only one word of God. There's not. Uh, the, well, if you like this part, you like that part, or whatever the case may be. It's just one. Uh, God only gave us a Bible, and He didn't give us, uh, you know, this and that and all these other things. We've got the Word of God. We're subject to other people's opinions from time to time. You know, I think that's a lot of that has to do with the troubles that we have in our world is we're worried about other people and what they think. Truthfully. Because if you get to a point where you don't care, you're going to live a whole lot happier life. Uh, I, I think I told, uh, I think I was telling my wife, I told her, I think I'm going to be a grumpy old man in some situation. Because I'm already getting there. You know, some people, I just don't care. Whatever, I don't care. You don't lie to me, that's okay, I love you. You know? But, uh, we've been subject to these things and uh, our, our culture that we live in. More people are worried about what people, how people view them online than they, uh, how they live their life in person. And it's taken a toll on our society. We're subject to these things. But it says, but, the, but by reason of him who has subjected the same hope. We have hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other hope. We, we talked not long ago, I don't know. I don't believe this was in the Romans series, but it's been a while back then, uh, where this is a uh, uh, not a uh, verb hope, but that this is a noun hope. This is something that yeah, we are not hoping in the sense of, you know, I hope that uh, I, I make it home. There's a pretty good idea that I will make it home, but, then, you know, it ain't 100% certain. I hope that I eat a good uh, lunch today. Now, my mama and my grandmama cook, so it's usually pretty good, but 
You know, something could have happened. I don't know. Uh, but but I hope for those things. And some of you are hoping the preacher finishes before you get too hungry. It may happen. It may not. I don't know. But we've got this, that hope. And then we've got a hope that we know is there. This is not a hope. A hope in Jesus Christ is not a reaching out, hoping that you grab a hold of something. It's knowing without a doubt in your heart of hearts that you can live in this hope of Jesus Christ. Now, we went ahead and got ahead of ourselves. But verse 24 and 25 is talking about this hope that we have. It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do then do we with patience wait for it. I've never seen Jesus Christ personally. I've seen evidence of him every day. You, you, you can't look at a child and not see the evidence of a heavenly father. You can't, you can't look at the creation and think that there's not a creator. Uh, I know people try and say this happened and that happened. There's a, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, you know, I know they've got their answers for it, but they say two particles hit together. And of course, I'm really dumbing this down, but two particles hit together and boom. Well, where'd the particles come from? Well, maybe some other universe. Well, where'd that universe come from? Two particles hit you know, so where those, where it's got to, to have a creation, you have to have a creator. Amen. That's just the truth. It may, believing in a God that is a creator in all things is so much easier than all these other things that they come up with. And, and, and that's just the truth of it all. But uh, we have a hope in these things. I've never personally heard God audibly or seen God with my eyes, but I know in my heart that Jesus is real. And the reason why I know He is real is because I have experienced Him myself. It's not because I read it in the Bible, although I have read it in the Bible. It's not because a preacher said it, although I've heard preachers say it. It's because I have experienced God and I know that I know that I know that I'm saved and there's coming a day that I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ in that glory that we were talking about earlier because of Him. Amen. You can too. There's people in the world, there's people I know, that they aren't for sure. They, they, they say that I, they hope that they have a different kind of hope than I have. They have a hope in that they were good enough. Or have a hope in that they did enough. Or have a hope in that they're one of the chosen. Or have a hope in these different things. I have a different kind of hope. In that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And that the Bible said. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. And I did that. And trusted and believed in him. And I'm saved. I have a hope that I live in now. It's not a hope that I'm reaching for. You can have the very same hope. There is no qualifications. There is no uh, uh, sign your name here and we'll get back with you. There is no being put on hold. There is no three to five business days. It is instant. When you call out to Jesus Christ, you can be saved if you trust in Him. And, 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 and people say all the time, well, I've got to get this right in my life, or I've got to get that right in my life. Sounds like a broken record preacher saying this, but you can't get right without God. You'll always be short. You'll always fall short. You'll always be reaching to try and get a little bit better. Why don't you get saved and let God do the rest? We'd be some pretty uh, uh, lost folks. If we was trying, if, if you could be good enough, we, we, we wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need Jesus. But the truth of the matter is, is that we can. And the only hope that we can possibly have is in Jesus Christ, in the blood of Jesus. Now, in verse 
26 through the end of this chapter, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth also help our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Then he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according, according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, and also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Verse 26, it tells us that the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. We've got some infirmities. Not only physically, mentally, spiritually, we've got them. But the Lord, the Spirit, it helps us. But it makes intercession for us. You know, you can pray about anything, anywhere, at any time. Mm -hmm. You ever had those times where you just didn't know what to say? I believe the Lord knows our heart. Knows our spirit. Uh, and there's been times where I've prayed, Lord, I don't know. Let your will be done and I'll follow behind. Uh, we get in trouble when we think we're smarter than the Lord. But there's groanings. The, the Lord, there, there's trouble in this world. There, there's things that we go through and that we have uh, in verse 25, as we read earlier, we, we, we do, we have to wait with patience for this. I'm not very patient. I'm not very uh, good at waiting on things. But, especially when we're going through things that we're going through, but the Spirit knows. And we can be comforted by the Spirit. Uh, how much do we miss out on because we will not allow the Spirit to comfort us because we don't go to God, we don't go to prayer, we just try to take care of it ourselves? Go to God. Let the Lord take care of the things that we have in our life. Now verse 28 is one of the most uh, interpreted, used out of, uh, misinterpreted, used out of context scriptures uh, in all of the Bible. People say all things work together for the good for them that love God. Uh, all these things that are going, everything that moves it's for our good. That's not what this verse is saying. Uh, I'm not going to stand and, and, and talk to a woman who's been raped and say, this is all for good. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to stand uh, to someone and tell parents of someone who lost a child and say, this is all for good. I mean, that's and that's not what God is saying. Either. Uh, now, that's not to say that God can't use those things. Uh, I know that God can use anything. God can use you know, someone who's been in, in, in an abusive relationship, and they get out of it, and they overcome it. They can, God can use them to help others. God's that kind of God. But, but, but now, as far as everything works together for good, in that context, as people use it, is not what this is saying. However... We do understand that God takes care of us. There's times where I look around and I say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And sometimes it's hard for me to say, Lord, I just trust you. As we talked about earlier, uh, it, it's hard to leave the things with God. And just to, to keep it there and say, Lord, you keep them, you take care of them. I'm going to take your burden. But we have a good God who does take care of us, who does love us, and who will strengthen us. 
And he'll strengthen us in these hard times. It says uh, in the second part of that, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, we have a purpose. Listen, this is what I want to tell you something this morning. If God has saved your soul, you are called to a purpose. Amen. I think, uh, I don't think, I know that Christians today, we have the mindset. It's not just Christians, it's us as a whole. What can others do for me? We, we were talking in Sunday school that, that our, our, our welfare bill in our nation is so, in such a state it's in because people think everybody ought to do something for them. Uh, we're no different. We think everybody ought to do stuff for us. That we ought to, uh, isn't it nicer, <laughs> at least in the time, now, I don't think like this, after you do, when you do something for somebody, it feels good. But uh, anybody here want to say you'd rather do something for somebody than somebody do it for you or something? Mm -hmm. Or you do something yourself? Anybody here turn down somebody to pay you the same wage you're making right now? And you don't have to, if, you're, if your boss said, hey, you don't have to come to work, we're just going to keep sending that check. How many of you can still go to work? Might go find another job, but you ain't gonna go back to that one because why would you? But we 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 we, we grab and we want and we this and we that, but we have to understand we have a purpose. And what is that purpose? Our purpose is to follow the will of God in our life. Amen. What is the will of God in my life? Preacher, people come to me. I don't know what the will of God is in my life. Can you tell me what it is? I don't know. I can tell you this. Number one, your purpose in your life is to be saved. God died, Jesus Christ came and He died for everybody so that everybody could be saved. That's number one. Then it's to be baptized, following the Lord in the first, uh, uh, in the first act of obedience. Then it's to join one of the Lord's churches and to get involved and to learn and to study. That's part of your purpose is to study and grow and, and, and to serve and to witness and to be a witness. That's everybody. But as far as these specific <coughs> things, only God can tell you that. And, by the way, you say I can't find what God wants me to do. Either one or two things is usually happening in that situation. Either one, they ain't trying to find what God wants them to do. Or God doesn't tell them what they want to do and they didn't want to do it. <laughs> uh, that's just the truth. No, they say, well, God, I don't think I want to do that. I want to find something else. And so they, they, they struggle. But there is no happiness like being in the will of God. Amen. There is no, no such a thing. Uh, I want to read you another passage of Scripture this morning. In, chapter, in, in the book of Luke, chapter 16. This world... We're going to kind of get back and bring it back to the beginning here this morning. This world is temporary. Everybody understand that? Amen. This world is temporary. Either you're going to die or the Lord will come back. This world is temporary. We read in the Bible that this world will be destroyed. It'll be no more. But heaven is eternal. And how we live our life here determines our eternity. Whether or not you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior or not determines your eternity. This is a very well-known story. But I want to tell you and read it to you to show you that there is a reality in knowing Jesus and having this hope and being understand, understanding that we have a glory that will be revealed in us if we know Him or if we don't, what will happen. There's a certain rich man, verse 19, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the, with the crumbs which fell to the rich man's table. 
Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. That would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. I have five brethren, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto them, If they'll hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. There's consequences from this life in eternity. Hell is a real place. This rich man is still there, being tormented. At this very hour that I'm talking about it, he is still in torment in hell right now. He said, oh, if there could just be some way out, if there could just be a little bit of comfort, it never came and it never will. He said, somebody could just go to someone that to, to, to those I love and tell them they believe. He said, no, there's people tell them. There's people tell them. And if they choose to reject them, they'll be here in the same place. You have a decision this morning. Are you going to reject? The invitation. Because I'll tell you, the title of our message is, It Gets Better, but if you're here, the truth is, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you stay that way, and you die that way, it gets worse than you. What is your answer? I walk around this world and I have better days some days. I have worse days some days. I have days where I don't feel like doing anything. I have days where I have energy. I have days where I just feel like not seeing anybody. There's days where I'd like to go see people. Uh, there's days I'm beat down by the world. There's days I'm lifted up by God. And all of it, by the way, is my fault. But... I can walk around through all of those times and still say it gets better. I'm looking forward to it. If you're here and you don't know Jesus and you die that way, I hope, first of all, don't, uh, don't let me see any of you go to hell. Don't, don't do that to me. I don't, I don't want to see that. But if you do, I believe very strongly that you'll remember this very day that the Lord is sitting there through His Word convicting you. This very moment, the way you feel. And it'll replay through your mind over and over again for all of eternity as you're being tormented and your thoughts to say, if I just would have trusted in Jesus.
It was right there. It could have got better. But it got worse. There's people that'll say, I don't believe in God because of all the evil in the world. Well, guess what? It gets better. But if not, if you choose to reject God, sadly it don't. What's your answer this morning? Will you leave out of here and say, I'm so <coughs> glad it's going to get better? Or will you leave out of here knowing because you know in your heart of hearts that hell is coming? I pray that you don't leave lost if you came in lost. I pray that if you came saved, you remember that hope. That you live your life like it gets better. That you go throughout your life, you're coming and going and your interactions with people in a loving way. And you tell them the good news. It gets better than this old world if you know Jesus. Let's all stay. As we get ready to have verse of invitation this morning, asking you.